what was it about your studies and background, your academic training, that led you to recognize Philip as being an extraordinary guy? Well, I was um, trained at University of California, San Diego. I'm a sociologist. And I had done um, my research on uh, in-depth ethnographic research on social change movements and groups of people that are aspiring to make change, personal change, and, and change in the world we live in. And so I had spent many years um, with in-depth interviews of people and how it affects their lives and meaning and um, change at a, a spiritual level, at a personal growth level, human potential movement, that kind of thing. Uh, so I had met and been exposed to many people who had attained those goals, and especially spiritual goals. Um, Yogananda's people, Paramahansa Yogananda and Self-Realization Fellowship, monks and nuns and lay disciples was the subject of my dissertation. And the practice of meditation and what happens when people truly commit themselves to a particular uh, way of life different than the one they were raised in and how it affects their families, their children, their marriages, their, uh, how they vote. It was an in-depth study. So I learned a lot about some of the higher beings, that some of what we may call saints, and, uh, but in that religious, in that tradition, spiritual tradition, um, it's yoga. And so when I met Philip, I had been trained for 20 years in a discipline, in understanding what people are able to um, manifest internally that you cannot see. And after uh, many years of research and writing, I developed an expertise. And when I met Philip, I was able to see that there was something extraordinary about him and his commitment and his vitality and his concern and his stature. Um, that I didn't know about when I met him. I met him before I knew what he stood for, but I recognized it as something very grand, very high, very purposeful for people, but also all of nature, animals, trees, and uh, the earth itself. In a very practical sense, what, what did you see Philip demonstrate that convinced you of that? Well, once I uh, understood a little more about which uh, I, I learned very quickly that his cause was my cause, that I prepared for that since I was a child. My connection with nature is intense and has always been. And I saw here he was on a, uh, what, uh, he was on a train that isn't going to stop towards solving some of the problems that were worrying me for decades. Like how are we gonna how are we gonna solve some of the problems for our not just our society, I'm a sociologist, our social institutions. What what are we gonna do? Uh, and of course personal transformation of people. What are we gonna how are we gonna succeed at our what we're so uh, diligently trying to accomplish for our own growth. Mm -hmm. And then how are we going to survive the planetary changes that we're facing? And I saw that he had um, uh, documented uh, uh, his abilities in Europe in the best labs and universities. Mm -hmm. I read about his track record and what he could do with hundreds of thousands of people, children, animals, and he brought uh, what they call healing. He brought major uh, change, transformation at the um, internal level, spiritual level, if you will, existential level, but that manifested at the physical level, the psychological, emotional level. He has a track record of being tested in Europe, and then we went about uh, testing him in the U.S. The claims that Philip was making in his writings and the uh, newspaper uh, media reports of Philip and his abilities were so enormous, they had to be taken seriously. And I know from my research, for 20 years of research, with people of higher 
powers, let us say, that these things are possible. Now, to see them in a person, in a human body, claiming that he has those powers and can actually do them, I knew it was possible. I didn't think I'd ever meet that person. And there he was. Mm -hmm. His appearance was timely. We're in a critical time. I knew that. So there's got to be a solution. Well, no, just this idea that his timing is, is not coincidental or, or uh, significant. The timing of his presence and his skills are, are not coincidental, but are, are quite... Uh, Auspicious. Yeah. No, no. Um, from what I knew from my uh, training, research, and my own life, we're in a crisis. And when there's a crisis of this magnitude, there has to be a solution. I knew that. There are many, many people on this planet working hard and praying hard, hoping hard, and uh, in the environmental movement, in all walks of life, yearning for a solution and expecting to be part of that solution. Uh, but we didn't have a solution. <laughs> and as soon as I met Philip, I knew we had a solution, and it was up to us to use them. Up to me to use them, because I was speaking of me. I met him, it was very clear what to do. Um, this, the idea of using him is, um, I think it's very interesting. I mean, it's a very, it's a, when, you, when you say use it, was, it's up to us to use him. Um, isn't it possible for him to just do whatever the hell he wants? Or is no. it up to us to use him? The, those are two different... Here's this wise guy and he knows everything, and he can act and do what he wants, and, but, but to, to put it in the terms that it's up to us to use him puts a different spin on it. Can you help me understand the difference? Well, as you know, <clears throat> the people, beings, uh, teachers, whoever, have come to this earth to help the human population throughout our history have come with a, an assignment. They've come with a purpose. They cannot impose that purpose on us. Jesus Christ is a, a Christ of the West. He cannot impose what he wanted to impose on the human race. He had to be there for them to, in his case, follow. That's not what we're doing here. Use him. Use his teachings. Use what he's saying and make it our own. That's how any teacher teaches. I'm a professor. You can't teach anybody anything. You have to help them learn what it is they want to learn. Human race has to want to solve these problems. There's people hope there's enough of us that do want to do that. Well, we have to be able to. The tools have to be there. And frankly, we don't have them. And I knew that. It was a very uh, disconcerting future that I was facing each month, each year. How are we going to make the changes that are necessary? Great. Of when you read his literature and his history, can you briefly, very briefly, just summarize what that, what that early history, when you first met him, when you began to familiarize yourself with his early history, what were the key um, markers of that that, that, in, that impressed you? Uh, he's a scientist and well known for his work in paleontology, uh, radical, but uh, well respected. Um, he was known for his work in uh, law enforcement, criminology. Uh, he was known for his eco-humanitarian work. He saved the lives of many extinct species, rainforests, uh, animals, endangered groups, including endangered peoples, indigenous peoples, um, uh, social and political, sexual groups, gay, lesbian, religious groups that are persecuted. He championed the cause in the name of justice for all those people. Um, that's very dear to me. and personally and academically. Um, so I was, of course, not only impressed, I was keen to um, help 